Hello my soccer universe. Overall, this was a great week for Austrian soccer. We had great performances in Europe, Salzburg easing over 20 ends here. Yes, it got tied at the end with 3-3, but they had full control of that game for most of the time that it got the tight I don't really get. And Rapid also totally dominated Trapson Sport at home and easily won this one. The scoreline should have been way higher than the final scoreline actually was. So repeat on and we have four teams again in the European group stages, which is really, really, really good for Austria. Also, the Bundesliga started out and unless you're a fan of a certain team that is not quite clicking yet, the games have been really good this season so far. And we're only three rounds in. Every single game this round was actually worth your time watching. And that is something amazing to say about the Bundesliga. So yeah, even though for LASK, it did not go well and I said it in my short video that I'm gonna plug in here. It was a great game, it was a great performance, the result though was not great and yeah, so at the moment Lask is only three points after three games and that's a little bit too little. The performances though overall, except for one really really bad half against Altach, were overall positive I would say. Speaking of Altach though, they are the sensation of the season so far. Do you remember? Just two weeks ago, I told you, Altach is already in crisis mode. Then they win in Linz, now they win again. Gustavo Santos is the player of the season, having scored every single Altach goal. It looks quite good. They have the best start to any Bundesliga season ever since the new format came. So, you know, fortunes can turn rather, rather quickly. The best team in the league at the moment clearly has to be said is Salzburg. You can already see that the depth in the squad is beyond anything that anybody else has. But I also have to give huge credit to Rapid who at the moment play out of their minds. They really look like a team that is gelling and is hitting form very early on already. If they keep that up, it will be repeated that are challenges to Salzburg's throne this year. However, you know, last season they also had a good start, so I don't wanna laud them too early, but at the moment what they're doing, and also big congratulations because I've criticized them a lot in the past for not qualifying for European group stages, given the status within the Austrian game. Now they're living it up repeat has to be a main contributor to the Austrian coefficient. If they don't live up to their billing, then it will be really, really, really tough. Let's start our weekly recap in Klagenfurt. Probably the most controversial game of the entire round. Sturm Graz really loved the golden jerseys at the moment, celebrating the double. And yes, the two times they have been wearing it, they have been winning it, but they should not have won this game. Klagenfurt, the team that after the first round, everyone thought, ooh, they will go down, actually outplayed Sturm Graz for most of the time. They created chances and they should have probably taken the lead after the first half. And then came the controversial scenes. There was one time where a Klagenfurt player is running towards goal, gets a little shove in the back in the box and that just unsettles him enough that he trips over. Potential penalty call. Then a penalty is given that I think was a little bit more controversial because you cannot really make out the touch, but you know, I guess there was a touch. Da, 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 da. It survived the VAR review. And Klagenfurt in the 66th minute get a penalty and Svetko steps up and sees his effort saved by Shell Skerpen. And from the penalty, Sturmgras launch a counter-attack onto the underside. Immediately it is saved, they run up the field, they create a chance and seemingly it's over, however, there was a handball in there. Again, one of those. It's not even clear who hit the ball first. Was it Beerit with his head or a defender with his arm? It's really hard to tell, but they look at it at VAR and they give a penalty. And so it's Kitteschwili who converts. Klangfurt still have more of the game. Had another shot for a penalty that was not given. Late on from that one, then there's a, a big throw up by Skerpen towards Beerit then, who makes it 2-0 deep into a very long stoppage time. Sturm Graz get the second win, but this one was really, really a tight one and Klagenfurt should have gotten more out of this game, which was a theme, I would say, for at least some Saturday games. <music> 
There was also a highly entertaining game in Graz between GRK and Blau-Weiß Linz, the two teams that have been most recently promoted, GRK for this season, Blau-Weiß Linz for last season, where there was also a little bit of a tussle when in the season that Blau-Weiß Linz got promoted, it seems like GRK is going through. And then Blau-Weiß Linz in the last match they kind of pipped them to that automatic promotion spot. So there's always a little bit going on between us. So this was a game going up and down, chances left and right. Blau-Weiß Linz take the lead through Ronnie Valdo. GRK also was in the game, however, when Dobras made it 2-0 in the 41st minute, you thought, oh, this is going easy for blau Linz, and GRK again have some trouble. But against Salzburg, they came back from 2-0 down, they managed this as well. Chipot in the 60th minute crowns a phase of a whole lot of pressure from GRK to make it 1-2, get them back into the game, and then former last player Filipovic makes it 2-2 in the 73rd minute, a fully deserved result. I have to say that first half was very even, second half early on, it was all GRK, Late on, blau Lanes had their chances to actually and potentially win this one as well. I also need to mention that the stadium looked awful the way they do it. Yes, there's stadium sharing, but the Sturm Graz fans don't want to have any other fans in their block. So behind the goal on the right side, there's nobody. Then both sets of fans for GRK fans are on the same end. It looks awful. Graz needs to solve the stadium problem. That much is for certain. Well, before we go a little bit deeper into the last game, let me play the short video that I recorded the day after, although I was really tired, so it was not super coherent, but here it is. Let's state the obvious. I really hate games against Salzburg because typically they bring out their best performances, however, with the worst results. Again, you lose against Salzburg despite pulling in the best performance of this young season. And yes, Salzburg also exchanged some players because they are focusing on Champions League playoff. They still had more control of the first half of the first half, if you would like. However, the closer came to halftime, the better last 20 to play had a good chance, but Schul that probably would have been called back for offside. Second half, last were really pressing Salzburg. They had them on the ropes, but not really creating chances. I mean, how about running? losing the ball when he had a three on two and on the one such equations then Salzburg launches a counter -act. after that brought on the cavalry in Oskar Gloch, Yeo and Bitstrup and score a crazy goal 1-0 and then Lars cannot find an equalizer they cannot find the back of the net which is the story of the season so far yeah a little bit of a gutting loss I gotta say so what can I tell you about the last game? First, the sad part. I was alone. My family is already on vacation and I'll be going on vacation very soon as well. So that felt kind of sad, but I still wanted to go because the weather actually turned. It was a little bit better. It was an evening game. It was a big game. And to the credit, Lask played really well. Yes, for the first 20 minutes, as I said, Salzburg were probably the slightly better team. They created a little bit more chances. Lask didn't create that many chances, but sometimes their attacking play was really fluid really well the pass is going left and right i especially like what lenny pinto did and the way he then assisted Schul for his only chance and yes in the build up there was an offside that was rather promising and overall this was a really good game to watch and there was atmosphere was everything was there second half lust came out are really pressing and there was this scene where Horvat is running and he has a three on two he has two attackers to the left and to the right and just at the last moment the ball bounces in front of him and he cannot control it and there's not even a shot given off at this moment so this really really hurts and i really feel bad for him because i really like this player but they already cost us a goal against Altach and now this one so yeah and there was a similar situation then just after Salzburg had made their changes where they brought on the cavalry in Yeo, Gloch and Bitzrup where again they have a counter-attack they cannot really quite finish in they get run into a counter themselves and Salzburg stay in there and it's also the Bocharde who has been outstanding everywhere but he made one mistake where he thinks he can get to the ball he doesn't make it and then the counter-attack continues then he potentially is fouled in, in the box around me many people said it was not and I think no one really made a big stink about it either in the end Gloch stays on the ball plays Doyeo who is on from a very short distance puts it into the net from a very difficult angle as well and that's the game but there were some really good passes in there as well I mean one from Schul to Ljubicic where there was just a tackle in, in between there was really good attacking player from Lusk also Jerome Boateng made his debut for Lusk you could see that there is a danger to his 
this game because he can play the deep ball from the last line onto the front which will be interesting in the end they do not get the equalized i think in this game it's showed through that salzburg have just the better players because performance wise the game was super level I would even give a slight edge to Lusk, especially in the second half. However, you lose another game and now you're sitting only in ninth spot with three points from three games and you better get wins now because otherwise, you know, Lusk is not a calm environment. The next few rounds will be crucial. Again, I always say, don't look at the table before round six or seven. Performance wise, things look good. Result wise, unfortunately not. Let's go all the way to Vorlberg, where Altach hosted WRC. WRC, who had this great start against Klagenfurt and then managed to lose unluckily against Austria Vienna. They go to Altach and are completely outplayed. Altach, seemingly with that win in Linz, suddenly they have confidence and they have a striker who is in mad form. It also helps that Wolfsburg do not know how to pick up Ingolich, who can make a run into the box. No one around him. Plays the ball in Gustavo Sanchez's 24th mini mix. 1 0, and at this time, this was already very much deserved. And then Altach said, We're gonna win for the first time this year. They haven't won this year at home. De Marco plays it onto Gustavo Santos, who again from short distance. And this time, none of the goals were like the previous ones where he just got behind, beyond the line. This time, he just found the space within the box and puts it in from a very centralized position. 2 0, and that was the game. There was no way that Wolfsburg were coming back. I think Altheim scored the third one that was then chalked off for an offside as well. So, yeah, not looking good for Wolfsburg at, at the moment. Didi Kuba, though, I think he will manage the turnaround sooner or later. Please. I would argue the best game of the round though happened in Hartberg. At least when you look at just mad chances. Maybe quality wise Lask against Salzburg was better. However, for pure spectacle, Hartberg against Austria fully delivered. Maurice Malone already scored in the third minute for Austria and then came up an onslaught from Hartberg who get in the 20th minute finally the equalizer after I think it was Heil from a short distance manages to put the ball over the bar. It was a very interesting goal because it was a played out from the back. The ball comes to Morge who runs through the midfield unchallenged, plays a nice ball through the lines to Mijic who then makes it 1-1. And then Hartberg were pressing even for more, especially in the second half they had some chances where it was harder to miss than to make the goal. Although there was also a penalty call in there because Elias Heil was through on goal, but he again gets this slight shove, a very slight shove that kind of unsettles his stepping sequence. And then he falls over himself instead of getting the ball into the empty net. Again, penalty? I think it should have been a penalty. It also has to be said that Hartberg could not keep up the high pace and Austria had also some chances late on. I would say this game could have ended 3-3, although it does not do quite justice. I feel that Hartberg had a bit more of the game. They get their first point of the season, which is crazy because this team should be better. But you know, they have a really, really tough schedule to open. Losing to Lask, losing to Sturm Graz. It is not getting easier, but they're getting a rest for the next week because Salzburg will have the game postponed to prepare for Dynamo Kiev in the Champions League playoff. And the last match we're talking about is Rapid against Tirol, which was actually nominally the top match of the round. Are both teams ahead of the round sitting in a second spot, if you would like. Rapid coming off the real high of beating Trabzonspor in very convincing fashion, having already a European group stage guaranteed. A Rapid did not maybe create that many chances, but whatever they created were high class chances. I mean, Burgstaller had one where he takes a shot himself, although he has Bayo on the side, uh, where he could just play the ball and he would roll it into the empty net. But I guess the striker is always going for that. The goal then came a little bit from a fluke because it was a cross in that got the slightest of deflection of, of the foot of a Tyrol defender and then it goes over the goalie and Bayo is free on the other side, heads it in and then it was all about Rapid trying to actually get the win, being able to save a few players because it, those are intense weeks. I mean they have to play Braga next. After a long cross, 
Rao Yao in the 67th minute makes it 2-0. Yes, there was a chance, but Taferna in between as well. And maybe some luck to roll could have put one back. But overall, this had Rapid written all over the fully deserved win. And Rapid at the moment are the only team that can keep up with Salzburg. And yes, those are also the two teams that are already playing in Europe and playing well. So maybe this has also something to do with it that these teams already need to be. When we look at the matches of the upcoming round, there are only five games. As I said, Salzburg Hartberg has been postponed because of the Champions League qualification. It's curious that Rapid and Lask did not do that. Lask have to play FCSB or Stauer Bucharest, if you would like. And Rapid already said play against Braga. All both games are on Thursday. Of the games in the next round, I mean, the one that sticks out is, of course, Austria Vienna against Lask. It's a traditional duel in there. We ha also have another Linz against Vienna fight between Blauweiß Linz and Rapid. It's also interesting that in both cases, the fan base is kind of a line Blauweiß and Rapid more the workers teams whereas Austria and Lask have a little bit more of a bourgeois fan base. I'm definitely curious if Alter also can get something off Sturm Graz and then Tirol against Klagenfurt. I actually think Klagenfurt have a chance there. And then on the bottom Wolfsburg against GRK. This is a big one especially for Wolfsburg who desperately need to get back to winning form. Now before we close this video, I'll be going on vacation for the next two weeks. I will probably record only short videos. I don't think there will be full reviews, but I will be back at the beginning of September. That much I can promise. In any case, please let me know what you thought about this round in Austria. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon about things in my soccer slash Bundesliga universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!